In this video, I'm going to be covering how to do a project in watercolor and also the same project in gouache so you can see the differences in between the two different kinds of water media. The drawing that I will be painting is from a Henry Clive painting from the early 1900s and he's a great pastel artist who works in dry media but his works look like oil and today we'll be working on his stuff and making it into watercolor and gouache. So you can see I've started on the watercolor side and I'm starting with my lightest colors because in watercolor you typically work from light to dark. I'm adding very wet thin paint onto dry paper so this is wet on dry and I am doing this just with the purple and blue shadows and I'm blending out edges where I want them with a damp brush with just water in it. You can put on the purple very thinly because if you are working in such a small area and you use too much water the lines will blur and the paint will really get out of control. So go ahead and use really thin washes of purple and also not too much water when you are spreading out or blending edges. Also keep in mind that anytime you want a darker purple someplace, you can just come back in after the first wash is dried and add more purple on top. So you can see that I'm doing that right now with the flowers and with the headband. I waited for the first wash of purple to dry and now I'm going back and making it darker. The color scheme I'm using for this painting is quinacridone red, quinacridone gold, and a phthalo blue. So it's going to be a very limited three color triad color scheme. With watercolor, one of the great things you can do is have a lot of awesome effects, and so you can see I've laid in just water onto the crescent moon in the background, and I've gone ahead and added my green mix into the background, and you can see how it bleeds in such a lovely way. And now I'm going to wait for that to dry, so I'm going to go over the gouache side and do the same thing. I'm going to add in the purple shadows in her little shirt and also in the headband and stuff. And so you can see I'm not really doing anything that's that different at this point because when you have something that's white like this shirt instead of going from dark to light and gouache or from mid-tone to dark to light you can just start with light and go to dark the same way you do with watercolor so it's the smartest thing to do if the majority of your color is white and that's the case for the shirt I'm putting in the base dark for my headband now it's going to be a good reference for the light and dark values for the painting if you have one area that's a solid dark because this is gouache, you can see I've already started touching the flowers in with some white because I can, whereas with the watercolor, I won't be able to do that. If I've lost a white, it's gone. I can only have the white of the paper for the watercolor. Still on the gouache side, and I'm adding in some of the details for her shirt, and as you can see, I've added in a little touch of green um, into the shirt for the shadows and the highlights because that'll help give me color constancy because the little crescent has green in the background so if you put a little bit of green in her shirt too it helps give the paper some uh, consistency and makes it look prettier. I've gone back over to the watercolor side I'm darkening up her headband. Now I'm jumping back over to the gouache side and starting to do the moon in the back and you can see how it's different from the watercolor because instead of doing a wet into wet it's more of an impressionistic way of patching in the different colors and they don't run and have the same sort of transparent water effects but it does give you something very similar as long as you move your brush strokes in a very loose sort of scumbly way. You can make the gouache very thin and also use it like watercolor but it doesn't really look that good. If you want to use something transparently you should just use the watercolor in the background. I've gone back over to the watercolor color side and you can see again wet into wet water effects and see how the moon on the left looks very sort of wet and loose and transparent and texturized and the one on the right looks a little bit more stiff and definitely more opaque and even though I have an impressionist feel to it it doesn't have the sort of um, melty watercolor look. I'm gonna do some quick wet into dry work on the left watercolor side before jumping back to the gouache side as the watercolor dries. So on the gouache side I'm gonna do the mid-tone method for the flowers. I put down the mid-tone orangish peach first and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the darker uh, orange red on top of the flowers and then come back with the light which is white highlights to make the flowers look like they have more dimension. And so that's how you would work with the mid-tone method with gouache. You can keep touching up a part of the painting until you're happy with it. So with this painting, once I've added the white, I've decided I do want some more shadow colors, so I'm gonna go back and do some more of that. And this is really great if you're working in gouache because you can sort of endlessly go back and forth, whereas with watercolor, you can only go from light to dark. 
Um, I'm also doing the back of her head, just that top part of her hair, with the mid-tone method. So, so far I've done the mid-tone method on the back of her hair and the flowers and the light to dark method on the very bottom for her shirt on the gouache side. And of course on the watercolor side I've just done light to dark so far. Doing her hair in the back there, you can see I've added in the mid-tone, my darkest darks, and then now my lightest lights. Once I'm done with the back of her head, I'm actually just going to stain the rest of her hair and also stain her face because I'm going to choose to do the grisaille method now for the rest of this painting for the rest of her hair, her face, and the bird so you can see as many techniques in the same painting as possible. I'm actually going to turn the camera off for the grisaille because I've shown it in another video so if you want to see how I do a grisaille then you can check out that other video and I'll probably do it again in future videos too. Okay, so now that the grisaille is there, you can see how it's given me a very sort of useful guide to my values for the rest of this painting. This is particularly useful if you are doing a lot of sort of value shading, even with your color, because it'll give you a guide for that later on. So I'm starting to color in this bird, and I did the other bird with the camera off, but I decided to do at least one of the birds with the camera on so you can see what I'm doing. This gouache hummingbird is easier to do than the watercolor hummingbird was because gouache doesn't spread as much as watercolor does. This is because you can use gouache so much drier than watercolor and also it dries instantly so it's really good for teeny tiny areas without making a mess. So for the watercolor bird of course I also try to use really sort of dryish washes so more dry brushing with just a little bit of blending because you don't want to have too much water in such a tiny area. I'm going to shortly move on to the rest of the face because it looks like this bird is looking good. So I'm going to start with adding in a brownish orange for her neck and the whole process of painting with gouache is just going to be a nice sort of experiment. You can put in a color if you don't like it, make it warmer, make it cooler, make it lighter, make it darker. It's totally malleable which is why it's a very fun medium to work with and anything can be corrected so I can go ahead and put white over something if I've made it too dark. I'm starting to add in the pink for the blush on her cheeks and it looks kind of scary right now but keep in mind that I can blend it away into the rest of her face and I can also add other colors to make it lighter or darker. I can also add other colors around it to make it relatively lighter and darker so the colors will continue to transform and change on her face as I'm making these sort of measurements with my eye based on the reference that I have and looking at my palette and trying to get that look. And again, you don't have to sort of slavishly copy anything. If you're an artist, you not only want to paint something well, but you also want to do it so that it looks more original, more creative, and perhaps more fanciful and exciting than the original reference, whether the original reference is a photograph or a painting. Make sure you do something creative and new. So I started putting on her makeup. I've actually put on her lipstick and I'm going to go to the eye area and also do her eyeshadow and and so I'm going to give her a more golden look around her eyebrows so that she looks a little bit more sort of alive and sort of romantic. And then I'm just going to continue to model the color tones on her face making some areas warmer, cooler, darker, lighter. I'm actually going to still let the grisaille tonal underpainting peek through and it's going to give me a lot of sort of beautiful depth and make the painting look like it has much nicer value consistency. Now that I'm done with her face, the bird looks a little bit washed out so I've gone and touched up the bird a little bit and now I'm going to finish her hair. I'm going to do the same process with her hair which is working on it in a grisaille fashion. The hair that's painted with grisaille is going to look a little bit different than the hair that was painted with the mid-tone method, so I'm probably going to end up having to work on one or the other to make them look more alike because the underpainting of the shadow on the rest of her hair will make this hair darker and more brown looking. And I did choose to do a very dark brown, almost sort of black grisaille underpainting for this. I could have chosen to do other colors too, but I felt like this was a good color, especially because this is gouache, I can always cover it up and make it a little bit lighter. If I was doing this on the watercolor side, then I would make sure that my grisaille is not that dark because I can't really cover it up. Right, back to the watercolor side. And as I said earlier, the grisaille here is a little bit lighter than the grisaille was on the gouache side. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of this painting on the watercolor side from light to dark, like I have painted watercolor paintings in other videos, and also just how I painted the shirt and the purple flower earlier. So I can't go back and correct it and make it lighter or add white. 
I can do a limited amount of lifting with a scrubber brush if I make a mistake, but I can't layer lights and darks the way I did on the gouache. So you can see the end result is going to look a little bit more orange and a little bit more red than the gouache side. And this is because the grisaille was darker on the gouache side. And also the gouache colors that I have are actually just less orange than the watercolor colors that I was using. So the watercolor girl looks like she's sort of got a sunburn, and <laughs> whereas the gouache girl looks like she's more keeping indoors. I could of course have prevented this if I used different colors on the watercolor, so that has nothing to do with the actual watercolor itself. Once I'm finished painting the watercolor side, take a moment to pause the video and compare the watercolor side with the gouache side, and you can see that you can get very similar results if you're painting with watercolor and with gouache, and you can work light to dark in watercolor, and you can work light to dark or dark to light in gouache, and you can do better water effects in watercolor, but gouache is more opaque, while watercolor is more luminous. So they have different qualities, but you can use them to do similar work, and hopefully this video will help you understand both of these different kinds of water media painting, and also encourage you to try some projects of your own.